If you work with multiple MIDI instruments at the same time, you may have noticed that the default settings in Reaper don't work so well for this. You have to double click to open each MIDI item, and each item open in its own floating window, and it just gets messy real quick. With these settings, it's very similar to how Logic does it. You will have a MIDI editor always open and docked at the bottom and whatever you have selected will show up in the MIDI editor. This way you can quickly switch and reference between MIDI items and even edit two or more MIDI items at the same time in the same MIDI editor. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set this up and I'm also gonna do a little demonstration on how I use it to write music. I want to give a shout out to my good friend 7 Sand for making this amazing article. The, here's the inspiration for this. I'm going to link to this article in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Now let me show you how to set this up. We go to Options, Settings, and in here we're going to go to the MIDI Editor tab. In here we're going to change a couple of things. Now remember when we try to open multiple MIDI editors and it kept opening floating windows? So this is what this line is for. So we want to open one MIDI editor per project. I much prefer this because you can click and select another MIDI editor. It's going to always be in the same place. Now the next things to change is enable active MIDI item full selection changes in a range view and also check selection is linked to visibility and selection is linked to editability. So this is going to make it possible to quickly switch between MIDI items by just simply clicking on them and also be able to edit them at the same time. By the way, I made an ebook where I share this tip and many others and it has all of the Reaper settings I suggest you to change. It also explains how a lot of Reaper things work and you can grab it for free. It's in the description below. We're going to also uncheck close editor. So only if you want to have always your MIDI editor open, kind of like logic style, I like to uncheck that. And the next thing to change is the opacity for the secondary MIDI item. Um, that's optional. You can keep it at two. That's how much um, you can see from the ghost note when you have two MIDI items selected. Let's say that you select this two and double click this one. And that's going to be the active item. And the secondary item is going to show up as a ghost note like this. These notes are these ones right here. And you can change the opacity of that to three or one or two. So three is the maximum brightness and one looks like this. So I like to keep it at three actually, but you can keep it at two. Let's do two. So yes, that's how it works. So, so that's pretty much all of the settings that you need to change in here. So now that we have the settings, I'm gonna show you how to have the media editor docked at the bottom at all times. And all, all we need to do is just open the MIDI editor. And there's this icon right here, which says dock editor. And as soon as you press it, it's going to dock it at the bottom. And one way to save this view is using screen sets. It's a way to save and load layouts. I do have a full video on this. It's a really good and useful thing. So you can save and remember all of your layouts. So for example, let's say that we really like having our MIDI editor at that position right there. I'm going to save this as a MIDI, as a screen set. So I'm going to call this MIDI editor. So now we can save and load this layout anytime. So for example, if we made a change, maybe we messed up and moved this elsewhere. Maybe it's over there now. We can simply just load this and it's going to go back to position. So now that our MIDI editor is docked at the bottom, we can totally just use this workflow as usual. So let's say that we have the four MIDI items. Now you will notice that as soon as you press, you click on them, it's going to switch to that take. So your bass, your guitars, your lead guitar, and your drums. All you need to do is just click on them. And if you want to reference to any of them, let's say you want to see your lead guitar and your drums, remember that the first item that you select is the active item, and the second item that you will select is the secondary item. The secondary items are not editable, uh, but you can see them in the media editor. Now, what if you wanted to edit your secondary items? Let's say that you have your guitars in here, but you also want to edit your drums and the bass in the same media editor. And this is kind of crazy, but yes, it's possible. 
The first thing to do is right click here right above the piano keys and go to options and go to CC events in multiple media items and enable draw and edit on all tracks. Next, we need to add an action to the toolbar and right click customize toolbar. Click on add and find this one. Make sure that you're in the section media editor and it says well, avoid automatically setting media items and all that. Select that and let's make this select this and icon, that's icon. Let's call this single track edit. Press OK. And now we have an icon that shows us a way to enable and disable single track edit mode. So when you disable this, you should be able to edit all of the items that you have selected. So if I click here, those are my drums and this should be my bass going in here. And if I write in here, it should be my guitar. Now it's a little confusing because they're all the same color. However, you can set this to work with the track color. And the way to do this, you go to right click above the piano keys, go to view and color notes by, and you can do it by track. So that way the purple or the base, the more purple, I don't know this color, indigo, um, that will be your drums and this orange track will be my guitar. So that's a way to differentiate between the, the four items. I can see this working really well with orchestra music. Maybe not for this so much. Maybe you're doing guitar and bass. So that would be useful because you could do both at the same time. But when you want to switch back to single track edit, uh, you just press that. And now the secondary item becomes like this. One last thing is that there are shortcuts to activate the nets and previous visible MIDI item. So it's a way to quickly switch back and forth between tracks. So let's say that you have your guitar and bass selected and you run this, it's going to switch to the bass. And if you press again, it's going to go back to the guitar and you can map this to a shortcut. There's also previews if you want to map the previews and the nets to shortcuts. So that's an easy way to quickly go the bass, guitar, bass, guitar, and all that. So I switch back to my main setup and I'm going to demonstrate how this workflow looks like in like real life. Uh, I'm going to make a four bar loop, very simple thing to show you just to demonstrate how this works. So I have my grid set to four. So all I need to do is just make this four items in here. So that will be four bars. So I'm going to make a time selection around this area. I'm going to make it set it to loop and I'm going to start with my guitars. Oh, by the way, um, if you've watched my video on how I write drums, you know that I have this drums view and this keyboard view that I can quickly switch back and forth. For example, if I'm writing guitars, I usually have it on keyboard view. But when I go to my drums, I click on this icon here and it shows me a list view with all of my hits in here in name note like this. So I'm actually going to start with my guitar. So I'm going to switch my, my keyboard. Let's start with some chords. Okay, I like that chord. Mmm, I like that. And then... Okay. Um, I'm, I usually, when I want to audition my chords, I use, I click and drag this little cursor in here. Uh, it's going to preview whatever is under the cursor. So if I click and drag, it's going to show me the chords. So it's a really good way to hear the transition between chords, which by the way, I'm totally making it up. I'm just seeing what looks good on and sounds good. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, I like this and I'm gonna repeat this for you. So. Okay, now we can quickly switch to the bass. And if we wanna see the guitars, we just need to select the bass and the guitars while being the, this one the first. And we can see the ghost notes are on here, so that's very useful to get our notes for the bass. So I usually just gonna get the root note. I'm gonna go one octave below, and maybe I can just yeah, split notes to grid. 
actually let me get my grid lower than that and this one can be orange color all right pretty simple uh, let's switch to the drums and switch to the drum view and let's do some kick like this let's do just double clicks wait let's do slow let's go like this so it's there So I got my snare and then I want some hi-hats in here, set to quarter notes. And maybe switch in here to my crush. All right, maybe not. Be harder hits, and this can be lower. <laughs> I do have a full video on how I write drums, so if you want to watch that, I'll link it down here. Okay, so now we got guitar chords, bass, and drums, and all we need left is guitar lead. And I was thinking we could use the chords to see the reference, and maybe we can do some arpeggios in this style. Um, so a good way to select these other track, and now I can see the ghost notes. So, so I can use these colors to reference which note I should use next. So green, yellow, purple. So okay, that's too slow. So I'm gonna put it back in here. I'm gonna change my speed to that. So something like. That's nice. Um, maybe this one. Ooh, I like that. Uh, let's do the same thing for this one. Ooh, I like that. And then we can do something different here. Instead of going like this, we're gonna go down and actually two octaves up. Hmm, I like that. And then we can do this. Pretty cool, and that took almost no effort. Like, that was really, really frictionless, and I really like this workflow. That was really fun to make. All right, that's it. I'm gonna link the article in the description below so you can check it out. Also, check out the Reaper Tips theme, and check out the new ebook with the new version of Reaper 7, the perfect setup. I have this tip and many others included, so you can get the setup exactly the way you want. It's all in the description. Check it out. See you later. Bye-bye.